Okay, so good afternoon, Ed folks. As my wonderful introduction said, I'm Katie Irvin. And today we're going to go into a little journey into the unknown aspects of LGD plus representation in film. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Katie, are you really qualified to come up here and stand and talk about this sort of stuff? Well, I might not be an expert, but I assure you, I believe I'm qualified. This is because I'm going to be going to Pitts Township a degree in film, so my interest in film knows no bounds. And as my introduction often stated, I am a part of the LGBT plus community here at STEM. I personally identify as pansexual, which for those of you who do not know, means that I can be attracted to a man, a woman, or someone who identifies as non-binary. I also use the label bisexual, which depending on who you ask, does mean the same thing. Now, you also might be thinking, Katie, hey, what is wrong with the LGBT plus representation? Why would anyone have to speak about it? And I agree with you there. Why is it wrong or flawed? Now, if I were to ask you to think of one or two gay characters in a movie or a TV show, I'm sure a lot of you would be able to answer me with one, two, or maybe even more names. But the representation that the LGBT plus community has these days is all right, but either it's lacking or it's flawed. And this is because directors are too afraid to put LGBT plus characters in main roles. This even goes for directors who are making movies based on queer events. Take Roland Emmerich, for example. In 2015, he made a movie based on a little known event called Stonewall. Now, for those of you who don't know what Stonewall is, it's not a little event that was just a joke. <laughs> Stonewall was the turning point in the LGBT plus modern day rights movement. During the 1960s, bars across the country and cities were being raided by police if they were ever to serve gay patrons. People would be arrested during these bar raids. The bars who served the gay patrons could possibly be shut down. It was honestly just a very scary mess. Until one fateful day in 1969, New York, a little queer gathering place called the Stonewall Inn was being raided, and the gay patrons of that bar said enough, and they fought back. Now, if you were to go and watch the Stonewall movie created by Roland Emmerich, you will not see a story that is commonly accepted as true. Now, although a lot of people don't really know who exactly started the Stonewall Riots in 1969, it is commonly accepted that two transgender women, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, were the ones who threw the first brick that started the whole shindig, that created what we now know as the modern day LGBT plus rights movement. And like I said, if you were to go and sit down and watch Emmerich Rowland's 2015 Stonewall movie, you would not see this. You would see the story of a young, white, gay man named Danny. Danny runs away from home and finds himself in New York City, 1969. The story goes on to follow Danny and his friends up until the fateful night of Stonewall, where Danny throws the first brick. Danny, a fictional gay, white man. Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson are nowhere in this film. And when asked, when Roland was asked about why he made up a main character instead of using two perfectly good main characters, he said, and I am paraphrasing here, this. Danny is very straight acting. He's a very easy in for straight audiences. They feel for him. Basically, Roland Emmerich was saying that having two black transgender women wouldn't be, would be too gay. Danny had to be straight acting because, of course, Straight people can't identify with or sympathize with gay people. That'd be ridiculous, right? Well, it goes against everything that Stonewall was actually about. The movie is an absolute absurd joke. Because Stonewall was not about, was not just about rights. It was also about having the ability to act gay instead of straight. Now, just to sort of move a little bit into the next topic that we will also be discussing that does relate back to this, and you'll see what I mean in a bit. Labels. As I mentioned earlier, 
I use the labels pansexual and bisexual to define myself. Labels are a huge part of everyday life. Some people decide to use labels, some people don't. And there's lots of labels out there. Homosexual, heterosexual, non-binary, man, woman, transgender. There's so many labels out there to fit all the different types of people we have in the world. Now, it's okay if you don't use labels, and it's fine if you do. Everyone's different. So, you might be thinking, shouldn't that be the same for fictional characters? Well, I would say in a perfect world, yes. Characters should have just as much of a right to use or not use labels as we do. But our world, and especially the world of Hollywood, is not perfect. Take something that happened to me over the summer. Me, a friend, and a friend of a friend were sitting down and talking about nothing, really. Until I brought up the point of Deadpool. Now, for those of you who do not know what Deadpool is, it's a Fox original movie based on a fast-talking mercenary who had a rogue experiment done on him that made him accelerated at healing and, a, and left him with a thirst for revenge. Now, prior to the film's debut, there were several articles that were published that had the director and the actor who plays Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, publicly announced that the character of Deadpool was going to be pansexual. This would make Deadpool one of the first openly pansexual characters on the silver screen. And so I brought this point up to my friend and my friend's friend. I was like, I really think that Deadpool is pretty progressive in LGBT plus representation. And the friend of the friend looked at me straight in the eye, frowned, and cocked his head to, a little bit to the side and said, what do you mean? Deadpool's not gay. He has a female love interest, and he doesn't even kiss a man on the screen. And I, whew, I was blown away by this. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's pretty forward. And I didn't understand why he was saying this to me. Didn't he get it? But then it dawned on me. It wasn't his fault that he didn't know that Deadpool was pansexual. In fact, if anyone didn't know Deadpool was pansexual in the audience, I won't blame you either, because and here's where it really gets down to using labels versus not using labels. If you were not to read the articles, you would never have known. Nowhere in the film is Deadpool ever expressed himself or otherwise as pansexual. He's never labeled as an LGBT plus member. And in our society today, if you are to have a female love interest and you are a man, you are assumed to be straight. In the world we live in today, a lot of people have, used, have the phrase, straight until proven otherwise. And then, if you are interested in the same sex, you're labeled as homosexual. There's no ground for middle of the spectrum people, such as myself. And this is really sad. But it also, and it also relates back to Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich decided that having a character who's too, too gay wouldn't be a good idea, because obviously, Straight audiences can't emphasize with people who aren't the same as them. Yet, LGBT plus people are constantly emphasizing and understanding and sympathizing with straight people who are everywhere on the silver screen. Plus, and the one thing I have to say to all the directors out there, is it's 2016. A lot of people are becoming less and less scared of the LGBT, the scary LGBT plus community. We're being more, we're represented more and more, and it's ridiculous to think that just because someone's gay, no one's gonna go see that movie. I feel that directors should have more faith in their audiences because it's ridiculous to think that no one's gonna be able to emphasize with such and such character for such and such reason. Representation is important for everyone, and we're in a more better society today that can deal with these representations and help people realize who they are. I thank you today for letting me come up here and talk to you all. And I hope that in the future, we can continue to spread more light and shine more light onto the scary aspects of LGBT+. Thank you.